Hello everybody and welcome to this Q&A video. I want to thank all the people that watched my previous video and placed comments and questions. So let's get started with the first one. Why I made this thing? The reason is I want a couple of variable voltage sources as well the typical analog and digital um, supply, you know, plus minus 12 volt and 5 volt, and all that compacted into a single enclosure. So, in regard to the question about the characteristics, uh, this section provides uh, uh, 0 to 60 volt uh, with a current of 10 amps uh, and uh, 250 watts, uh, which means that uh, we can get uh, maximum 4 amps. Uh, amps at uh, 60 volt. However, since this is provided through a switching back conver converter, it provides uh, the full 10 amps uh, from a few volts uh, up to 25 volts, uh, uh, which is with uh, a high efficiency of 83%. The downside is that uh, this is a bit noisy, and this is why I added this filter here, and uh, this section can be Turn it off separately from the linear section, so this will not interfere with the linear section uh, when, in the case, uh, I'm testing sensitive circuits. The other sections are based upon a classical linear series regulation. You know, the kind of circuit uh, with a transistor that adjusts uh, the voltage drop across it, uh, and uh, so the output uh, reaches the desired voltage by subtracting such a voltage dropper from the input voltage here. It has uh, this section that provides uh, 0 to 24 volt uh, with a maximum uh, current of 6.5 amps uh, with very low noise. It features a precision current limit uh, with a cutoff limit or hold uh, and of course uh, the short circuit protection and this switch allows to disconnect the output while the supply stays on at the set voltage, which is pretty convenient when you want to test uh, certain circuits. And the last section is uh, here, and it is formed by this dual output voltage uh, supply, and uh, this single output supply it provides a fixed voltage, uh, 12 volt or 50 volt, uh, and, uh, for this and here uh, we can change uh, frequency switch between 3.3 volt and 5 volt uh, and yes i forgot to include the switch so i added this uh, when I, the panel was already done and this combination is uh, really useful when you want to test a uh, circuit uh, with the analog part uh, a control analog part uh, a digital part uh, and maybe you need uh, a variable voltage uh, with a bit of power. Another question was if I did load tests, of course I did, and uh, here I connected a resistor as a load, for example, and I increasing voltage uh, to increase the current, uh, and here we can see the current limit is, uh, has been reached, and, uh, and so the current doesn't increase anymore, unless I increase this potentiometer to reach the maximum that is about six and a half amps uh, a bit more six and a half amps six and seven and doing these tests had uh, i had some mishaps uh, so yeah i had uh, 12 transistors that uh, dead uh, doing these tests <laughs> this is quite heavy instrument uh, as, as it, it weighs uh, 22 kilograms or, or a little bit less than 50 pounds and it took me six months to finish uh, this uh, thing uh, actual work uh, was about 60 hours however another question was about temperature while the switching section uh, has a high efficiency and the uh, heat is not of much concern. The linear section dissipates uh, a lot of power, especially when the output uh, has high current and low voltage. So to keep the circuit within the, the temperature limits, uh, I embedded a PTC resistor calibrated uh, to 
stop the circuit uh, when the heat sink uh, reaches 70 degrees Celsius or 158 Fahrenheit. And here I have also a fan and the bridges are mounted on the walls of the enclosure so they dissipate heat through the, the, metal, of the, the metal of the case. I also added these uh, uh, heat sinks uh, for the bridges uh, and this heat sink for the plus minus 12 volt and 5 volt. Another question was about uh, why six transformers? First off, I reclaimed components uh, that I already all had uh, on my drawers, uh, and uh, in this case, I had uh, a lot of transformers. But these three sections are isolated among them, so they can be wired uh, to in series uh, to reach up to under 14 volts uh, DC. You have to know what you do, of course, and these inputs that uh, can be used to provide external control to the output voltage uh, are completely isolated in respect with any other part uh, of this uh, uh, instrument. And as you can see here on this schematics, uh, you need uh, uh, several separate coils uh, to uh, provide energy to the various sections because they are isolated among them, as you can see here too. And I also exploited the fact that uh, I had two transformers, 150 watts transformers, 150 watt, volt amps uh, transformers that uh, I put together in series to get uh, more power uh, from these transformers uh, without buying anything because I had this at home. As you can see here I used two transformers to get more power, to double the power and uh, to reduce the power dissipated by the, the transistor and depending by the regulated voltage the two relays uh, switch uh. Of course if you uh, don't have any transformer you just buy the transformer you need uh, with the taps uh, and the coils you need <laughs> or maybe you buy a standard uh, toroidal transformer and uh, you add uh, some coils that which is pretty simple with the uh, toroidal transformer as you can see in my previous video where I show how to add more coils to your toroidal transformer a link here somewhere here and in the description another guy commented about uh, did bug soldering <laughs> but well not exactly did bug but let's say kind of surface mount uh, technology I find it more practical when I make PCBs myself uh, allows more tight connections or short connections that uh, makes uh, uh, let's say concentrated nodes uh, and uh, better performance with high frequencies also it is faster because you don't have you don't have to, to make any hole except for maybe uh, fastenings Another point was uh, about uh, TL3 packages, which is uh, outdated. Yes, but if you have plenty of them, <laughs> uh, also TL3 has much lower te thermal resistance, uh, which is nice uh, when you have a lot of power to dissipate. But of course, yeah, TO247 is a better package for production because it's less labor intensive and, but in a DIY context uh, it doesn't matter much. If I were to design this for production I would have made different choices of course and this build should be considered only under the DIY perspective. Well, I hope I satisfied your questions uh, and uh, in these days I'm going to upload uh, the schematics and uh, all information about this project on my website uh, at uh, accidentalscience.com. And for now, that's all folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>